What is good, everybody? Hello, hello. I'm starting with a question on today about what do you want to be known for? What do you want to be relevant for? When you are on the mind, if somebody's recalling your life and your impact, what do you want to be known for? What do you want to be relevant for? We hear a lot, particularly in the culture that we're in, about being rich and famous and what being rich and famous enables you to do. But what do you want to actually be known and be relevant for? For. What do you want your impact to mean? What meaning do you want to impress upon the lives of other people? And I'm not going to fill this in for you or tell you what to think, but I will say that this has a lot to do with something that I'm passionate about, which is called self-mastery. And self-mastery defined because a lot of people don't think that that term is fun and sexy, but we're bringing sexy back. Self-mastery is often defined as self-control, the ability to exert a strong will against our impulses to steer our future to one of our choosing, okay? So it really requires having a vision for your future self and really being invested in the long game rather than instant gratification. So I'm going to talk today about delayed gratification. I know it's a very interesting winding game that we're we're going through right now, but when you think about what you want to be known for, what you want to be relevant for, what you want your impact to mean or really how you want to be known in the world, right? What you want your legacy to be. This is something that's really important because it's not achieved overnight, right? So, when you delay gratification, this actually has to do with self-mastery, and I'm going to get to that and tie it together for you so you don't really have to fill in the gap, okay? So saving for your dream home, trying to fit into the skinny jeans or, you know, the cool collared shirts, whatever it is, guys or gals, wanting a lasting, loving relationship, knowing how to delay pleasure in an effort to serve a more important and more gratifying goal makes all the difference in achieving that goal. So I know for me personally, I don't know if it was because I was a rule follower growing up and there was a lot of consequences for not following the rules, or if it's because I was an athlete, I think both of those had a major impact on my ability and capacity to really start to understand this, although I didn't know the language or this phrase about delaying gratification. I think that those really helped me to do that. But it has to do with self-mastery because it's our ability to self-regulate. So it is exercising self-control and really steering our will towards the outcomes that we're after, not the ones that are just spur of the moment. So particularly outcomes that have to do more with future plans, okay? So in a culture surround, surrounded by the messaging that you can lose the discomfort right now, the ability to wait for a long-term reward is less attractive. And we know this. We want instant all the things. We just, we just want it. Give it to me now, right? But that isn't the best way. So what is delayed gratification? If you haven't heard of this before, you probably have. Maybe you just don't have it in your library of things that you pull on every day. But the concept is self-control, self-regulation, and really those are used interchangeably here, but it's the ability to delay the impulse for an immediate reward to receive a more favorable reward at a later time, okay? So that is really, really important because it's really having a standard for your life and showing up and meeting that standard, really keeping promises with yourself and what you do when you exercise that self-control. Because the minute you decide to do something, you will have an alternative. You will have something else that is tempting to steer you in a different direction. You will have something that tries to get you to take shortcuts, okay? And, and to get you off that commitment. All right. So that's really important to keep in mind, but really big areas or, or domains that we really focus on when you think of delaying gratification, it's these five things, delaying gratification for food, delaying gratification for physical pleasures, delaying gratification for social interactions, delaying gratification for money, 
and then delaying gratification for achievement. Okay. So I'll go into these a little bit, but it's really the ability to exert our willpower and delay the attainment of pleasure. Okay. So really the vision of your future self is key here because if you can see something and if you can understand what it takes to get there and what it would mean to be there and what it's going to require to, to live that, that lifestyle, to take care of that investment, whatever it is, then you will put in the work now because you know that that's far better than what you could get today. Okay. Number, I have a really good example of this actually. So I was listening to a podcast and the gentleman that created the Spartan race he uh, did some sort of challenge with his kids where he removed food from the equation and then he had them do all these challenges where they were thoroughly exhausted, but he removed their food and he removed their phone. And then after going through all these challenges, he brought both elements back. And the interesting thing was none of the kids chose the food, they chose the phone. So that is interesting to me because a lot of times we choose things that aren't necessarily necessary for our survival, but we are addicted to in some sense. We would rather have a dopamine hit than something that could nourish our body, right? Like that was wild to me. But at any rate, food, keep this in mind. 37.7 of Americans suffering from obesity and chronic diseases currently, okay? And this is something that potentially delayed gratification could solve, okay? It requires considerable effort to override instant gratification and satiating low nutrient food that is readily available in favor of better overall health. So when it comes to food, it's easy to choose fast food and that's on purpose. It's easy to scarf down all these nutrient I don't know. They don't have nutrients. So I was gonna, I can't say nutrient dense, but lacking nutrient <laughs> content, right? Like food that lacks nutrients. It's really easy to scarf that down. And peak performance really takes an extreme delay of gratification. So if someone who wants to get healthy has to view themselves in a personal peak state instead of seeing themselves as someone who might be featured on the cover of a magazine. Okay. Healthy food intake requires eating a smaller slice of cake once in a while instead of ingesting the whole cake. Food habits add up quickly and a healthy lifestyle will always serve someone better than a quick fix or a fad diet. Okay. So when it comes to food, instead of having a consistent workout practice, drinking water, eating clean and as close to the source as possible, watching portion sizes, eating for fuel, not just for pleasure, eating to energize and, and bring nutrients into your body to help you to operate optimally. Those are all choices. And in order to commit to doing that on a day-to-day -day basis, you have to have a long-term why. So whether that's you want to be present at your daughter's wedding, whether that's you want to be here on this earth for your child's graduation, whether that's you have this larger vision of your impact and legacy that you want to be healthy and see all the way through, you've got to have a bigger vision of why delaying gratification is valuable. Maybe you want to be a certain size to get into a wedding dress. Maybe you want to make a good example for your kids and, and demonstrate how easy it can be to make simple choices because that's really what it comes down to at the end of the day it's choices when it comes to food. Do you want to delay the fast food line and go home and heat up some leftovers that maybe you food prepped and prepared over the weekend versus waiting in a fast food line and eating food that does nothing for your body and literally makes you addicted to a lot of unhealthy things, right? So it's it's a choice, but what are you modeling and what are you deciding and what is the payoff? If you know the long-term payoff, if you know that having good energy, sleeping better, feeling good in your body, fitting into the clothes that you want to fit into, if you know all that's better, being able to have a clear mind in order to create and do what you're here to do, if those things outweigh this instant hit of pleasure that you're going to get, then you'll decide to choose something else. And 
as you choose choices that are healthy for you, you start to strengthen that muscle. Just like as you choose choices that are not healthy for you, you start to strengthen that too. So it's using your self-control to give you a reward that you're ultimately after. Because this pattern of, oh my God, I'm really hungry. I really want this hamburger. I really want those fries, whatever. Going through the process of going to get it, eating it and feeling good, and then feeling like crap, and then feeling guilty, and then wanting to starve yourself the next day, only to find that you're binge eating again. Cycles like that never lead to freedom. That is control, <laughs> right? That is not freedom at all. Another one, physical pleasures. Rates of addiction are soaring. Overcoming addiction takes increased levels of delayed sat satisfaction and vast improvements of self-awareness, okay? So I will say to this with physical pleasures, whether that's alcohol, drugs, sex, whatever it happens to be, I know for me, with any sort of addiction, I don't believe that we are powerful to overcome that on our own. Sure, you can fast. However, I believe that this needs divine intervention a lot of the time, right? Depending on the type of addiction and what chemically is going on in your body. So I don't believe that this is just a delayed gratification kind of a deal. I do believe that you need prayer, divine intervention, and God helping you through this for sure. But that also lets you know how important it is to not just go down these paths of that or really understanding the self-awareness part is key here. Like, why is it that you're using that crutch? What is that crutch doing for you? And if that crutch were removed from your life, what would that give you? So I know for me, I had eating disorder issues in college and I knew that it was something that wasn't going to be present in my whole life, but it was also something that I didn't feel like I had control over or that I could just make go away. And what started to really freak me out was I became a shell of who I was. I had no energy to do really anything. I had little bursts of energy and that was about it. I was like a high functioning addict is what I would say. Um, and I could maintain an image, but how valuable is that if it's a lie? Right. And I was really, freaked out by the thought of what that impact would be or how would I ever do what I've actually been put on the earth to do? And like, if I maintain this crutch, what is that ultimately going to do to my body? If my body isn't getting nutrients, if I'm living under this kind of stress, if I'm working against myself and going down a downward cycle, how is that going to evolve? If I play that movie out, maybe it looks okay today, but how is that going to look down the line. And if these patterns that led me to this place aren't resolved, what other things could this turn into? And why do I need this crutch in the first place? Okay. So for me, that was rooted in perfectionism and high achievement and needing to maintain a certain image because that's what was acceptable or that's what was needed. And a lot of like body shaming and body issues that were planted in the family growing up. So it evolved from that. But it was bizarre because it was not serving me at all, right? So it's like, I the best example that I can have for this, the Apostle Paul says in the word that he keeps doing this thing that he knows not to do, yet the things he wants to do, he can't do. And so that's why I'm saying that divine intervention is so, so important here. But what helps is thinking what's at stake in you continuing down that path. And if you remove that crutch, what does that mean? So for me... I felt like I needed to control life because everything in my life was unmanageable. Everything in my life was out of control. So I thought I had to be the one to fix it. And I knew that in my own strength, I was not capable to some degree, right? After so many years of, of doing that, you hit a wall, you burn out. And the only way to do that is some sort of crutch if you don't have God. And I definitely didn't have God at that point. So just an example there. Next one, social interaction. So this really has to do with emotional control, but delaying the gratification of social engagement in favor of long-term academic goals is a good example, or delaying gratification of social engagement for building a side hustle or stepping into that entrepreneurial venture for your future. These are examples like, sure, you could go out and hang out with a friend and go to some party or um, 
say yes to every social engagement there is. But on the other side of that, what do you get? Are you hungover? Was there any value added to your life? What was the return on investment, right? Versus if you use that time to learn a new skill, to apply the new skill, to build on that learning, to develop yourself, right? And to to build something that is contributing and adding value to society and helping you really gain more financial freedom, more creative freedom in your life. What is more valuable to you? That's not saying completely cut these off, but there's a lot of value in delaying gratification. Okay. Um, next one, financial well-being. So with rapid, right? With rapidly, there we go. Just try saying that three times fast with me. <laughs> with rapidly delivered deliverable goods, so Amazon, right? Consistently in our periphery, it can prove challenging to save money for retirement or for paying off a car or paying off the mortgage or whatever it happens to be. However, making those priorities and keeping that in front of your mind is very, very powerful. So if you are looking at your bank account a couple of times a week and you know it's actually available, that helps you weigh decisions, right? If you are managing your expenses every day, right? Then you know what's coming in and coming out. Living blind or not paying your bills on time or all of that is not good. So setting up a budget and having that open on your computer or having it on like a Google Sheets document so you can see it all the time, having a way that you can log expenses really easily and just getting really good at managing a budget helps you steward well that you're given and it helps you move to these higher and higher levels. So a really great example is with home ownership. When you shift from renting to home ownership, you start recognizing that there are more things now as an owner for you to take care of that you probably didn't even think about before, whether now you have a yard, whether now you have, you know, different, different things to, to take care of that you wouldn't have thought of before. And now that's, that's on you at the end of the day. So having money set aside to take care of that or, or saving to do those things, or to really set yourself up for a good place, there, there's an example. You can pay your mortgage early and that can actually, sh in the long term, that can shave money off your mortgage as a whole. But knowing and learning things like this, you can start setting aside money and working towards these things in a totally different way. And once that money's set aside and once you don't see it, so for example, if you have money that you just automatically put into uh a retirement or something and you just don't see it, you don't act like you have it then. If, it, if you're not seeing it every day, then you don't account for it in the sense of that's not available for you to spend, right? So doing things like that that are automatic is also something that's really smart and it's a way to help you delay gratification. So set that stuff up. Like, okay, if this is going to be the money that I am earning or taking in or what I'm going to use to calculate my salary or just like my monthly income, my annual income, whatever it is, then set up the other things that you need, whether that's healthcare, retirement plan, whatever, even just investments, have that money set aside so that you know what you on a weekly, monthly basis are working from. And then you can give yourself little rewards, but you don't put yourself in a rough place. So that's really good. And then lastly, number five is achievement. So with this one, Work ethic really varies from person to person. A really great example is I grew up in a family with two older sisters and two younger and we're blended. And although we grew up exposed to the same parents <laughs> and the same values or the same activities or whatever, we all decided to show up and operate very differently, which is really, really interesting. But work ethic varies from person to person. High achievers choose to work for long-term goals consistently. I definitely fell into that category, specifically with academics, specifically with athletics. I knew very early. That's why I struggled in college, because that's when things were shifting for me, right? Like when I was all in on F with athletics, right, then 
I just knew how to fuel my body or how I had to manage my time in order to excel in school and have these hobbies. And there was the threat of, if I don't manage that well, then this thing's going to be removed from your life. And I loved athletics. So I did not want those to be removed from my life. So I was going to find a way, even if it was, I think back in the day, I would literally <laughs> roll up a towel and put it at the at the door crack, you know, when the doors close so that no light would shine through. I would do that in order to stay up really, really late and get things done. But I had to figure out how to make it work and be really resourceful because I had that long-term vision. I wanted to be a athlete. I wanted to get scholarships to get into college. I wanted to work really hard because I saw the value of what that would mean for me and what it would feel like I started thinking about that before it happened. So visualization and all of that was very real for me. And I was able to delay gratification. So I didn't go out in high school because I was babysitting my younger sister, but that also allowed me to get more work done during the weekend to make my week load lighter. And then I also could be really present in all my extracurricular activities too. So avoiding distraction staying self-motivated and having a strong connection with the why of the goal is an important. So this is really, really a good example. So I knew that I really wanted to go to college. I knew that there was a lot of information that I felt like I needed in order to be successful. Right. And I was hungry to go after that and to really explore who I would become having this new information. So that was really important to me. I also wanted to really know experientially that I could make it on my own, right? I was intimidated by that thought from a very early age because I had to grow up really fast. So I wanted to make sure that I could make it on my own. So I was almost on this like accelerated timeline to learn as much as I can apply it so that I could ensure that for myself. So I don't always recommend that because you don't need to be on this fast tri- track in life by any means. But I learned very quickly about the power of instant gratification. Really what it is, yes, self-control, but it's a daily habit. And it's a daily habit that starts from the minute you wake up. Like, are you that person when you wake up that hits snooze and just keeps sleeping? Are you the person that the alarm goes off and you're up? Are you the person that set a goal to lose 10 pounds within the next 30 to 45 days, but then doesn't put the workout clothes out, doesn't get up and do the workout. Are you that person? Are you the person that wants a really healthy relationship, but settles for one that is actually really destructive, one that you ignored all the red flags, one that you lowered your standard or your boundaries to have in your life, one that you tolerated? knowing that you really wanted this and this is what you deserve, right? So it really prevents us from your relationships, a lot of dysfunction, a lot of pain, soul ties, just so many things in relationships with ourselves. It really saves us from a lot of unnecessary stress because yes, it's hard to show up, but the stress of having to make up for something that you could have done or to operate and like, crap, I got to get a done mode because you forgot about it. That's just not fun. And, and what you practice is what you keep getting more of. And so what do you want to be strong in your life? That's why it's a habit. So learning how to delay the impulse for immediate pleasure in favor of long-term satisfaction is a skill required for incremental and long-term growth. Fully recognizing and being aware of the impulse gives way to the higher goal attainment and the formation of new neural pathways through neuroplasticity and new habit formation. Successful goal attainment in any area will require the recognition of a conscious choice, okay? The ability to override the impulse to seek instant pleasure needs to be nurtured at a very young age. Okay, let's see if there's anything else that I wrote down that would be good. So my example of technology is just how how that's impaired our ability to delay gratification. Um, 
But an example of this, which I love that it is bringing in the science of the brain here too. So an example of neural pathways is you driving to and from home the same way every day. You literally take the same road every day, but now you decide to take back roads and country roads, right? And you start forming a new path to come home. It'll form eventually, but in the beginning, if there's no path there, it takes a minute to start forming a path, but eventually that'll form, right? And you won't use this other one anymore. So it's similar to that. You don't get a new habit by focusing on the old one or focusing on how hard that is to let go because you really get what you focus on. So you get a new habit by focusing on the new habit and showing up for the new habit and getting really good at the new habit. You don't focus on what you're giving up. You don't focus on how hard it is. You don't focus on how long is it going to take for me to get here. You just focus on doing the new habit and getting really, really good at it being really really at it and as you do it you remind yourself of the why right if you have worked out you recognize that after workout you typically feel better you have endorphins flowing to your body you're more focused you're more energized your body is also burning off fat and building muscle which really helps you to be strong it really helps your bones and joints as well it takes a lot of pressure off so you start to recognize that you can recognize a huge difference just as far as being hydrated and being dehydrated in terms of just this sluggishness that you feel in your body, your headaches and migraines that you can get when you're dehydrated. So you can notice a huge difference. So in relationships, the more knowledge you get in relationships, the more radically responsible you get for your own behavior versus trying to control or fix or blame other people. Wow. It is so, so powerful because you also attract a different level of human into your life, right? When you are vibrating, so to speak, at a completely different level, there are certain things that you might have accepted before that are no longer acceptable for you. So as you mature, you start to recognize that. And that's not good, or bad, right, or wrong. That's not about shaming. That's just recognizing that it is so important to know who you are and where you're going so that you build and prepare for that. And when particularly in relationships that you are building with the long term in mind, like this person might be right for you today, but are they for you for the long term? That's really important when you think about a committed relationship. So for example, if this person is just fun, because you go out and you're able to have a good time and laugh, but they maybe don't believe what you believe, they don't have the same values that you have, they don't have the vision that you have, they're not present when you share excitement around different accomplishments, accomplishments that you're making towards that vision, that person likely isn't designed to go into your future. And so what are you doing? Really? See what I'm saying? So it's really, really important to begin practicing delayed gratification. That's how you really work your self-control, self-regulation muscles. And it requires self-awareness. So a really good thing that I love to do is bookending my day. So starting the day with quiet time, with prayer, reading the word, journaling, whatever it is, but starting the day present and in quiet time, because a lot of times you can understand what's going on in your own soul, in your inner man, so to speak. So starting your day with that and recognizing where your power, where your motivation is, what your thought life is like, what's going on in your heart, where your emotions at, so, so important. Then at the end of the day, you can really do an assessment about how the day went. What are you grateful for? What could have gone differently? What are you going to apply tomorrow? What are you proud of yourself for? What were the little wins that made a huge difference, right? When you do that every day, you become more self-aware, right? Or when you are meeting with people, having the phone on silent and out of the way, being present with people, it brings a whole new level to interactions and really actively practicing that. And so putting things in your life, putting different check-ins, checkpoints, if you will, <laughs> to check in with yourself and see how am I doing, right? Where do I need to pivot? Where do I need to realign so that I'm actually building what I want? And then what happens too is I schedule a lot of things out. So a lot of times I could brain dump, often I do this, but I will brain dump items that I really am focusing on or working towards. And then they might start out on something like an index card and then I will move things from the index card to my calendar 
And sometimes I'll shift it on my calendar, but they still get done within that week. Right. And then that also helps me allow my yes to be yes and my no to be no. It helps me be a really good decision maker that people actually honor and respect because it's showing that I value my time. It's showing that I know how to delay gratification. If I show up and do this here, then I'll be able to be fully present here and really enjoy it. Right. So it really helps me to, to manage and be present and really experience life on a completely different level. So my encouragement to you on today is to think about what you want to be relevant for, what you want to be known for, the impact that you want to have, and then pull back from that. How are you going to get there? It doesn't happen like this. How are you going to get there? Okay. And you can look currently at your self control your self-regulatory practices, your habits in a very simple language. How are you doing with those? Do you have three to five habits that you're really good at? Do you have a new habit that you're working on building? Is there this one area that is just on your mind that you know that you need to make some adjustments, but you're not doing? And what is it going to take for you to build momentum with that, to decide to commit and to keep taking consistent action? What is it going to take for you? Is it going to be writing out a plan is it going to be working with a coach? Is it also getting an accountability partner? Is it joining some sort of program so that you have more support involved on your, your new adventure, your new journey? What is it? What does it look like? And then that will become easier and easier in time to close the gap from where you are to where it is that you want to be. But you really have to make where it is that you want to be so, so compelling. So it can be like a magnet that draws you forth versus you will stay in this place until this becomes so miserable that you can't stand it anymore, right? Because the options are go back, stay where you are, keep living that same life, or continue to progress, continue to stretch, continue to reach, continue to go after greatness every day, choosing to be excellent every day and competing against yourself, right? And then what is the impact of that going to look like? Just play it out. That's a beautiful thing that we have with our imaginations is you can play out a movie <laughs> before it happens. And you can get really good at that. In fact, we are great at it, but it's often for things that we don't want. So how can you flip the script, so to speak, and start visualizing what it is that you do want and start taking the actions that will make that possible? So I hope this gave some context and some perspective. I hope this spoke to you where you're at right now. It's strange. I don't really talk about topics like this. So I know it's for somebody. But if this message blessed you, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And then also, you can copy the link and share it with a friend. And then if you do need coaching or would really find this work valuable, I have a six-week self-mastery course, self-paced. You can go through that. There is also different coaching packages and programs over on julianapage.com. So you can check that out as well. All right, guys, until.